it has been a while, but here we are again with a mini PC review, and I hope that you'll find it not terrible. Today I'm doing a review of the Chattery IT12. It comes equipped with an Intel Core i9-12900H, which houses six performance cores and eight efficiency cores, giving a total of 20 processing threads. It is further equipped with 32 gigabytes of DDR3200 RAM, a one terabyte PCIe Gen 4 SSD with Windows 11 pre-installed. This mini PC is adorned with a Thunderbolt 4 connector, four USB 3.2 Gen A ports, headphone and mic jacks, as well as the power switch along the front. Around back we have two HDMI 2.0 connections, as well as a display port 1.4 jack. Those plus the Thunderbolt connection on the front can allow this machine to run four displays at once. We also have two USB 2.0 ports, which work well for keyboards and mice, and two 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports. The sides and back do not reveal much other than some vents and some spots for a VESA mount on the bottom. Further rounding out connectivity, we also have Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.0. Power is provided by a 120 watt 19 volt external power supply. You can expand the storage on the IT12 with another M.2 slot, this time Gen 3, that can work with both NVMe and NGFF SATA SSDs, as well as a spot for a 2.5 inch SATA drive. A machine like this isn't as cheap as what I've normally reviewed. This one retails on Amazon right now for around $770, but has a $100 coupon as well. I received this through Amazon Vine, and I'm really liking the machine. The link to it should be provided in the video description. Windows 11 setup was straightforward, but I did end up having to use the trick to create a local account without a network connection. It looks like a rather plain version, no specific bloatware. Benchmarks looked really impressive. The drive they provided tested read speeds of over 7 gigabytes a second and write speeds around 6 gigabytes a second. It does get warm though, with the exact values I failed to record. I ran my normal Windows benchmarks and they look pretty good. CPU Z scored this at 710 single core and 6776 multi core. Cinebench R23 gave this machine 1,733 single and 12,771 multi-core. CPU temps rose quickly, and while the CPU can run near 5 GHz, during the benchmarks, they generally settled around 2.8 GHz. The 10-minute Cinebench run ran the CPU temperatures up to around 93 degrees C, and the fan made quite a bit of noise, trying to help keep everything from melting. Curious if there was any hidden programs or viruses on the machine that I wouldn't want, I ran Windows Virus Scanner and came up with no threats. I did this again after connecting to the web and downloading updates, and still no threats found. I tried one other program, Bitdefender, and it also could not find anything to be concerned about. I did not get any Linux benchmarks at this time because my Ubuntu image didn't provide a display. This is my first time using it on a 12th gen CPU, so I'm sure there is some display drivers that I'm missing. Access to the internals of this machine isn't that bad. To access the extra internal storage spots, you have to first remove the four feet on the bottom. Under those are four Phillips head screws that must be removed, then the bottom will come off with a little help, of course. We can now see the Fission SSD and a spot to put a 2.5 drive in. Taking the drive caddy off allows access to the second M.2 slot, as well as to the two SODIM slots, currently occupied by two 16GB SK Hinx sticks. The internal Wi-Fi card is located under the primary M.2 slot with removable antenna leads. To get any further, there are four screws inside the plastic surround to remove, and at that point you can take the entire computer board out. 
I removed a couple other screws and it turns out those hold the blower and heat sink to the CPU. Whoops. It all went back together smoothly. I moved the Fission drive to the second M.2 slot and put a 1TB SanDisk Extreme stick in the primary. I also put a 2.5 inch SSD inside once I found one that would fit. Of note, the SATA cables are short but too long at the same time and I ended up shoving it under the drive caddy. I decided to do a fresh install of Windows 11 just to see what all would break. Turns out there was quite a bit. At first the display drivers weren't installed nor was the sound or ethernet connections. Luckily the Wi-Fi worked. Eventually I found the display drivers through Intel but some problems persisted. I went to Chattery's site and was surprised to see that the drivers were there for downloading, though hosted on a Google Drive. I scanned those after downloading and after decompression, and nothing was flagged. It took a few minutes going through each and every device that needed a driver, but eventually I did get it all working. What was unfortunate is that my camera filled up the SD card, and I didn't have a backup ready, so a lot of that isn't captured. The IT12 is marketed as ideal for home or business productivity, gaming, servers, or education systems. The ability to run four displays is pretty wild in a machine this size, so in theory it could be used to drive a digital wall of sorts. For me, I'm going to use it for video editing with KDN Live. Right now we are in the middle of a move, so the timing of the opportunity to review this machine was actually great. Tell me what you think. Do you have a need for something this powerful in such a small form factor? There are other mini PCs around this size that could be more or less. If you're just uh, surfing the web, those might not be for you. If you like small productivity machines or have the ability to run a GPU over Thunderbolt 4 and want to game, this would probably be pretty good at it. The fact that I can't find any malicious programs in the background seems pretty promising as well, though don't consider what I've looked at to be the end all and proof that there is no problem. Check out the link in the description if you want to see this PC or something like it. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. I hope that it wasn't terrible. The one thing that could be terrible is this microphone. Um, unfortunately, I packed up my microphone, so I'm using a lavalier mic, and I do not think it sounds the same. You'll have to let me know what you think.